Okay, so hello and welcome back to another Unity roguelike tutorial. In this one, we're going to be covering how to make uh, the coins fly to the player and then also adding maybe a destructible object when the player walks into it or something along those lines. We'll, we'll see. Um, the goal in the series is just to keep adding and adding and adding each video. And obviously, if you've got anything in particular you think I should add earlier on, then just say and just I'll add it. But anyway, we need to get some way of these coins to fly to the player. Now, first of all, let's go to prefabs and just put one in the scene. Uh, in scene view. Now, actually, that's not going to work because uh, that's I've added it in like world space. Uh, that is not what we want. Uh, let's go to two D and like this. If we had a coin there, for example, uh, let's just shrink the coin. I feel like it was probably a bit too big. No, that'll be fine. Maybe a little bit more. The coins in the actual Wizard of the Legend are really small, but yeah, we'll save that. All right, apply. Um, and on the coin prefab, we want to add a script. We want um, our coin, well here we go, I was messing around earlier, float to uh, player. And this is just going to make the object float to the player. Though, if you want the object to move, it needs to have a rigid body, which it does, but it's on static mode. Static meaning it's not going to move. So, we want to change that to uh, dynamic. The differences are static means it can't move. Kinematic means it can only move via code and script, and dynamic means it can move via code and script or physics, just gravity and all that lot, and pushing it. So material we don't need really, at least we're not going to care for now. Simulated just, I mean I don't get that one, it's not in the 3D rigid body, it just means it, it works or it doesn't, and we want it on. Um, auto mass is a way of like, it can calculate the mass depending on the size of the object, which I guess is cool, but we don't want that, we don't need mass for this anyway, we'll just leave it at 1. Drag, yeah, it doesn't matter. Gravity, just by default this is one, but I've already changed it down. Make sure you've got gravity on zero, because we don't want these to drop off the screen. We want them to stay where they are. And then collision, yeah, it, it's all okay. We can leave it. So, 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 so. Well, now we're going to our script we made. And here we are. So, what do we need in this script? We need a, we need a way to reference the player. So, private game object, player. We need a public float. Uh, speed, like the speed that it comes to the player, and then what well, we've got game object, that's all we need okay, void start so in the start in the start, yeah, start function we need to get the player, so we'll say player equals game object dot find player, I'm going to do this mainly because we just, the player is the only um the player is the only thing that's ever going to be called player, so I'll just leave it at that. And then in the update, every frame, we want to move to the player. And the way we do this is we get our transform. So, uh, yeah, transform.position. So we get our current position and set it equal to, uh, if there's this function called vector3.move towards, which takes in three values. So where we are now, where we want to be, and how fast we do it. So. Uh, we're going to go from our transform.position to the player's transform.position at our speed times by time.delta time because um, we don't, we want it to be frame independent. We, I'll add a little bit more to this if any of you are wanting me to add more. I mean, you're probably shouting at me. I've not done anything wrong, but there's stuff we need to add to make it better. Um, so let's just test it out now. The first problem is that Let's wait for this car to go first. Yeah. The first problem is that the speed is zero, so it's not going to move. Let's change it to four, maybe. I don't know how big these values should be. We'll have a see. That is very fast. Change it to two. Mm. To be honest, I'm happy with two. So now when we kill the enemies and there's, there's money, it moves towards us. And that's all good. So that, that already works basically, there's not much more we have to add there. The only thing we really have to add is, what if the player dies, it's going to try and do this and it'll crash because the player doesn't exist. So we have to say, if player does not equal null, like before we move at all, we want to make sure they exist. And if they don't, then it's not going to run it, all is fine. Okay, that's not going to make any differences really to its functionality, but it'll just make it so we don't crash. All right, so that's that. That wasn't very difficult. That's only five minutes in. What else should we add? We should add. Hmm. Let's add a way of like an object being destructible when the player walks into it. Or should we add um? 
we could add the sprinting mechanic. Like, let's think of something that we haven't added that's quite important. So, what have we got currently? We've got running around and dashing, which is currently just like an actual teleport kind of dash. We've got enemies shooting at us. Um, we could have... Hmm... Currency on screen. Let's have currency on screen. So, um... I don't know where I'll do it, but I guess for now, well, on Wizard Legend it shows down here at the bottom. So what I'll do is I will um, go to the UI. Which, well, this is basically the UI. Um, I will just yeah, I'll go to the UI overlay. Um, I'll just add it on here. So panel, we're gonna add a text element. Uh, do you want me looking? text and we'll just say well let, let's take the text from the other thing so that we get like the same kind of thing and we'll just get it to say um, gold value we'll move it down let's just shrink this so we get it to say um, gold colon zero for example and if we put 100 yeah, gold comma Let's scale it to the right so the text stays in the same position. And we'll scale it to the end. That just depends on where we want it. Like we could go halfway. Move it up a tad. Because um, let's say we, wanna, we might want to put gold and gems on there. So we could go like this. Let me shrink the size a little bit. Mm. 22. Okay, so gold is zero, and then we could have um, gem value. Uh, be gems zero, and then gem can be right below it. So we got golden gems. Um, to be honest, the values are never going to be that high, so I might actually just bring them over here a bit. Okay. Um, and what else do we want then? We want to be able to change them in script, that's basically it. So we're going to say, where's the script where we get the um, players, coins, and gems? The player stats, okay. So, currently we just have their gems and coins and we increase it when we collide with the things so instead of increasing it we'll do the function thing and we'll have a um, because we can have a function we can then call it to update the UI as well so we can say um, public void add coins float um, amount and we'll just say um, coins plus equals amount but then we also want. Oh. Ah, okay. Uh, yeah, it's always going to be an integer. So, all right. <clears throat> so after we've got the amount added, we can then say, like, coins value dot text. I know it's going to go red because I've not added it yet. But dot text is equal to. Um, wait, it'll be lowercase text. Uh, is equal to gold plus coins dot two string and then let's just go up here and add it so as well as having coins and gems we want public tech or public game object um, um, it, we'll just call it coins value public game object um, gems value Let's go down. Uh, coins value dot text. Do we not have the UI in here? We do. Oh, we do. Um, okay. So sorry. Um, it's because I put these as game objects, not text values. <laughs> there we go. 
that's going to work. And then we'll just do the same here. We'll say um, public void add gems int amount gems plus equals amount. Oh, we could actually write one function to do both. Ah, okay. Um, if we go to, uh, let, let's go to our um, code for the, we might as well make use of the enumerator. If we go to our, I don't know, where's the enemy dying thing? Um, enemy shooting, oh, play stats, enemy damage. So when the enemy dies, um, Loot drop, yeah, I'm an idiot. I need to check the loot drop thing. Um, currency pickup. All right, so it's just a thing on the floor, and when I collide with it, it's either a coin or a gem, and it'll add it to my coins or gems depending on what it is. So what we want to basically say is, um, well, th this thing's going to add it, have its. Um, Okay, so um, we'll just say player stats dot player stat. Yeah, okay. Player stats dot player stats dot, and then we'll go and write that function quickly. Just add currency, and then we want to take in a type currency pick up um, currency so we know this one function for any currency we add and then we can have it in here basically saying um, if currency um, uh, doo -doo -doo, currency dot current object is equal to a coin coins plus equals currency dot value uh, dot pickup quantity and we can just say um, else if currency dot current object is equal to currency uh, currency pickup dot pickup object dot gem is a gem then we'll say uh, gems plus equals currency dot pickup quantity and I'd, there is no else because it's going to be one or the other in the enumerator so that's fine and then we can say um, coins value dot text is equal to uh, gold space plus um, coins dot two te two string sorry not two te two string um, and then we'll just copy that here for gems value dot text is gems that uh, gems dot two string so now we're passing in a, we're passing in this. So we'll say place dot add currency this. So basically we're passing in this object, and just let it go. And once we've got this done, we can go into the game manager, and it's going to ask for a coin value and a gem value. Now, coins gold. I should really call it. I should keep naming consistent. So if I go to the player stats and at top instead of coins oh, I've got it coins coins gold sorry let me let me just check what name I've used here Coin, I've used it coins everywhere else but on here I call it gold value so I just change this to coins value the UI overlay still has it right so now we can check whether that works um, there we go it's adding to the coins on the UI so that's working 
and then just for the sake of testing let's um i've got an idea this is this is a weird idea to make it work but what we'll do is we'll say um i want to go get some coins like this and on this next one as the coin is midair uh We'll take this one and we'll just by hand change the uh, enumerator on it to gem and unpause. So now as you see the gem went up because it was I changed it to a type of gem. So we can now pick up gems and things. Uh, for the sake of the gem object I'll just, well, um, I'm trying to think how gems work. Gems are basically the same as coins in the game, they just drop from bosses only and like um, some like chests. So we can, we can add a chest thing uh, in the next video. We'll add some more things. Uh, how's this video going on? 15 minutes. So yeah, in this one we've uh, set up the UI. We've used a numerator. We've used a function that takes in type. Sorry, a function that takes in a specific class value uh, variable. So we'll take an a currency pickup, access the enumerator from it, and then we also did the moving to player. It wasn't a very complicated video, but you know we still made some progress just slowly once each video. Um, one thing I want to mention is I'm, I'm going to keep making this series, so don't worry. I'll keep going probably once or twice a week. Um, next week, so are from Monday, I mean if you're watching this when it comes out then this might be relevant, I'm going to be away from Monday to Friday, so I'm going to have to record like four or five videos in advance and upload them once each day while I'm away because I can upload them all and then set them to release each day. So that means that even though I'm uploading videos daily still, I will be away so I won't be able to respond to comments within the first five days, so you know if, if I'm not responding then that's why. Same in the Discord channel, I still encourage you to join our Discord in the description if you want, but I won't be active in it for those five days because I'm going to be away. Um, but yeah, I hope you still, uh, you know, those of you in the server, I hope you, uh, you know, are under control. Uh, hopefully the other admins and people will take good care of you and answer your questions and whatever. Um, also, uh, subscribing would mean a lot. I am currently like 30 off reaching 1000. I'm really hyped up and I'm going to make a 1000 sub special and some other s announcements and things. So that's going to be good. Can't wait for that. Uh, but yeah, anyway, there's not much more I'll say, uh, so thanks for watching, and goodbye.